Then lean gains, lean gains. Today's video is about power meters. You're gonna do a video why power meters are expensive gimmicks and you shouldn't get one. Well, I disagree with that one. I've got uh, four power meters now. I've got three stages and one power tap. What is a power meter? What is a power meter? Power meter is basically, this is my power tap. So this fat hub here contains strain gauges. The strain gauge measures the force that your your legs are putting for the bike, so it goes to the rear wheel. So this has got a fat hub, it's got strain gauges inside. That's a power tap, which I recommend. Alternatively, you have the stages power meter. This isn't actually stages, but the stages is like a little strain gauge mounted on the back, like a bit of a big black cockroach, I'll call them. And they just stick it on the back of there. And I've got it on other bikes, but I've done videos about that. So why do I use this power meter? Why do I recommend power meter? Power meter is a great way to train for anyone regardless of fucking fitness. Anyone regardless of fucking fitness. If you're a total noob, learn to ride a bike again after a 30 year break or whatever, or want to get a pro contract or whatever, power meter is going to help you get your goals because it shows you what you're actually doing. No other way shows you what you're actually doing. Average speed means fuck all. Heart rate, nah, a lot of variables, a lot of variables there. So what are you, what are you left with? Speed, this means fuck all. Heart rate, nah, power. Power is actually what you're doing right now. What are you doing? Heart rate's more how you're responding to something. But your heart rate can fluctuate if you're taking stimulants, you're dehydrated, you're super excited, not enough carbs in the system. Heart rate can fluctuate wildly. So heart rate is not an accurate pacing tool compared to power. Power is like what you're doing right now. So if you back off your pedals, your power drops off. If you push on the pedals, power goes up. If you increase your cadence, power can go up. That's, and that's what things that's taught me a lot is now with a power meter since 2009, my cadence has gone up. Cadence means how many times you spin the pedal per minute. So optimum cadence for climbing is between 80 to 110. For sprinting, it's more like 95 to 130. Some downhill and BMXs get up to 170, even 200 cadence. So the more you can spin it, you save your, your sugar stores because when you're spinning your pedals, you're burning more fat. When you're grinding your pedals, you're burning more sugars. So your sugar stores are exhaustible. So if you can spin, you can go longer, you can burn more fat, you can burn more total calories because you just go longer, you can go better. So you want to learn how to spin at least 80 RPM. And all the power meters these days, the stages and the power tap, they come with a built-in cadence meter. So it registers, people go, hey, you see what your power is. So you've got your thing called a Garmin head unit and you got, I use a few different Garmin's. This one's I use for running, but also measures a power meter on your bike. So the Garmin's are great expensive yeah i mean definitely if you're, if you're living in the west generally you can afford a power meter if you make some sacrifices you can you know if you're fucking honest with yourself anyone can afford a power meter if you really want it if you really want it you can chances are you're watching this video you're living in a western economy and so you can be able to afford these things if you live in a western economy where you can maybe work some extra hours over time you generally can afford it if you're living in certain countries low income then you understand but you're probably not gonna be watching my video if you're earning a dollar a day like well two dollars a day like 50 percent of the world population does 50 percent of the world lives on less than two dollars a day so don't please don't tell me you're earning twenty thousand dollars a year or fifty thousand dollars a year you go, oh i'd like to get a power meter i can't oh, come on that's bullshit if you want something you can get it power meter today i did a, a race a duathlon very hot I lost five kilos in that race. So my performance went, <laughs> crashed, crashed down. And people got to kick during riders ass today. I still finished, I think, seventh in the state. It was a state championship duathlon. But it was my sort of course. It was climbing. It was hot. It was a lot of running. And so it was my sort of, you know, I thought, yeah, I'm going to do pretty good today, my ego said. But I got smashed because after the run, I started getting dry. I hadn't been having enough sleep during the week. I'd been having late nights on Instagram yeah, trolling. Yes, yeah, so I, got, I got top 10 in the state, but I could have got better. But anyway, so the power meter was great because I'm going up the hill, I'm going to the wind, and I could see my wattage wasn't what I normally could hold. If I didn't have the power meter, I'd be like, wow, the competition's really good today or whatever. But it wasn't that. It's just I was out of shape. I had not enough water in my system from too many late nights, not drinking enough. So the power meter showed me I was dehydrated. I was carved up. 
slept not enough, but I just I was getting dry. I wasn't getting thirsty, but I, was, I could feel the dryness. I could tell by the wattages how they were low compared to normal that something wasn't happening. So that was powerful tool today. If we had a power meter, I, I, yeah, it would have been really. I would have struggled even more today because I understood what happened straight away. I go, I can't hold my watts. I can't hold my watts that like I normally could for this climb. Means I'm getting fucking dehydrated. So I'm gonna flip the switch. I went into economy mode where I just say, okay, bring it down to this sort of wattage and try and hold this versus try and just push, push, push and just blow up. I switched into economy mode, bam, and finished the race. I think seventh overall. So that was where the power is really helpful. It shows you what you're doing. People say, Harley, I don't race. I never want to race. Fine, but you don't you race your mates. Ain't in the race to get fitter. Yeah, you are. So power meter is going to help you go up any climb you want because it's going to teach you about how to get better gearing on your bike. If you can't, if you get a power meter on your bike and your cadence is going at 80, you don't have enough gears on your bike to go up that climb. So get a, a compact crank set or get a 32 on the back or whatever. Get bigger teeth on the back. So the bigger this is, this is like a 28. The bigger this is, the easier it is climbing, the better cadence you can have. A lot of the world's best climbers like Contador, etc., use a 32 on the back with a 34 up front. So that's a big spinning gear. The more you can spin, the more fat you'll burn. You'll save your legs for when it matters. Another thing with power meters is that you don't really need to understand. I don't train with like a, a fancy training program, or whatever. I just use Strava, which is a free app. Strava. Um, so I don't, I don't have a coach. I don't follow anything full on rigorous, but I use power to show me where I'm at, show me what, I'm, what I did today. What am I doing now? What have I done today or yesterday? Am I getting better? And what do I need to do to get to the next step? Here's an example. You write up your local climb. It takes you 10 minutes. You can hold 200 watts. You know, if you want to get better, you have to try and hold 220 watts or 250 watts one day. You know what I mean? So without a power meter, you just go, oh, I'm pushing hard. But what are you doing? You don't really know what you're doing unless you've got wattages. That's what the pro riders use. And that's why guys like Dr. Ferrari and Lance Armstrong use a power meter. Most experienced, you know, athletes around, best drug protocols, but it's all the waste of time without a power meter to objectively say, this is what the fuck we are doing now. And yes, we are improving because the wattage went up or the watts per kilo went up. So without a power meter, you cannot say you're getting fitter or whatever, especially if you've been doing it for a while. Because sometimes people have a bad day, like today. Someone might have thought, wow, I beat Duran Rider, I'm getting really fit. I just had a fucking bad day. But if I had a power meter on and saw that, they'd go, oh, well, Duran Rider had a bad day, because look at the watts. Duran Rider can normally do better than that. So the power meter shows you what's going on. I encourage people to get invested in the power meter. I rate the stages, cycling power meter. I rate the power tap, not sponsored by either company. I paid retail. Why do I promote them? Because it's cheap. They're the cheapest, the lightest, easiest to service power meters in the market. The SRM and the Quarks are expensive, heavier, flexier. Um, require a lot of more messing around. So they're, they're good products, they're excellent products, SRM, Quark, etc. But in 2013, almost 2014, why are you going to spend so much money for essentially something that you can get almost 25% of the original price, like stage or power tap? Why are you going to spend $4,000 or $2,000 for Quark or SRM when you can spend seven, 800 bucks and get a power tap of Quark? You got too much money, maybe. But then they maybe buy a power meter for someone else. That's my tips on power meters. Are power meters expensive gimmicks? Definitely fucking not. Are power meters more affordable than ever before? Definitely. Will a power meter help you achieve your fitness goals? Definitely, because it'll teach you how to pace properly so you can just cruise. I went out with a friend the other day. She's like, I've never been up Norton Summit. I'm like, we'll get you up Norton Summit, guaranteed. Norton Summit, for those who don't know, is a five and a half kilometer climb, about 5.6% gradient. It's a decent climb. She would get to the first uh, 2K and go, to turn around, go home. We went out there. I said, you just ride next to me. And I just picked a good wattage on you that she'd be able to comfortably get the climb. At the start, she's like pushing big watts. I'm like, no, no, back it off, back it off. Hold my watts, just sit next to me. Got up the climb easy. Next day was, or well, next few days, out there again. Because understanding how to pace properly is essential for climbing. Whether you're Chris Froome attacking off the front, looking down at your stem, looking down at your stem, or total beginner starting out, want to get fitter. Power meter is going to help you. You don't need to get a fancy bike. But you need to get a power meter. That's my opinion. That's my experience. Post your comments and questions down below. Next question. See you soon. <laughs>